Good evening, and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. I am very glad that all y'all out there could join us tonight. Uh, I've got a full panel, and uh, we got Charlie here going to show us some, some veneering stuff. We're going to go from where we left off last time, so I'm really, really excited. And just once again, thank you for being here, and thank you for watching, and thank you for all those who are already over in the chat. I appreciate it. So... We're going to get started and go kind of quick because um, Dave's show is right after this. So I've been invited over to come over to his show. And if y'all know Dave Gatton, he does CNC with Dave. He's right behind my show and he's got an announcement tonight. I think this is going to be his last show. So I'm going to go over there and join him. So basically, um, you still got a little time left for Wheeler Gig Wars. Uh, it ends Monday, which is the 31st at midnight. So you got time left to uh, put your entry in for really good wars. I appreciate shade it very much for all those uh, that have gotten theirs in already. I got Shane, uh, Shane's today, and uh, I think Donna's too today, and they're already up in the um, playlist. Um, the palette challenge is coming up, and that's running from August first to August thirty first. So. As soon as the Whirly Gig Wars is over, the Palette Challenge starts. So be looking forward to your entries in the Palette Challenge. And um, go from that to uh, my sponsors, which are uh, Devobal Technologies for web design, development, hosting. Go to devobal.com. And then I'll wait until it changes. FastCap of uh, innovative products for the professional woodworker. Go to see FastCap and Rockler. Uh, Build with confidence with Rocklear or create with confidence with Rocklear. I'll get that right. And then I want to make just a real quick announcement because I'm really, really excited. When I say these, these are full-time, uh, what I call my level one sponsors. These guys donate to me all the time and plus some other things. So like every, uh, any giveaway or whatever, I can make a phone call. I have another full-time sponsor that is just now joining me. Um, happened this week and they are... Bearwood Supply Company. Uh, so go check them out over at bearwood.com. I haven't had a chance to get their name up on there, but I guarantee it'll be there next week. But uh, yeah, Bearwood Supply Company. They sell all kinds of, uh, they sell Pegasus scroll saw blades. They sell uh, uh, wheels, uh, parts for different things. They sell clock, uh, clock parts and clock accessories. Uh, Steve, you can help me out. What else do they have on there real quick? Picture hanging supplies. Um, they actually have some patterns on there. Uh, a lot of stuff. I mean, it, it's mostly just small accessories. If you're a toy builder, it's a bla great place to go or a right. clock builder. So, Bear Woods uh, Supply, uh, and it's Bear Woods. Bearwood.com is where you want to go to check them out. So I'll get them up. I've already got them on my YouTube channel and like other, a couple other places. i just kind of been busy and having a chance. All right. So going right along, let's go down the list. Charlie, you're going to be last. And Al, uh, real quick, tell us where we can find you and let's move on. On Facebook, um, it's Odessa Woodworking. And on YouTube, it's Al Forte's Odessa Woodworking. Next. Uh, Donald. I'm Donald Matthews, also known as Donald Vlogsify. My YouTube channel is Donald Vlogsify's Woodshop. And my website, website, yeah, something like that. Website is rednecknowhow.com. Thank you for being here. And Donna. Donna's Wooden Art. You find me on YouTube, Facebook, webpage, and uh, Twitter, all on the same thing. And then Michael Chipster. Hey, what's up, guys? Mike Chipster here. You can find me on Facebook under Michael Chipster or Wood Chips Tech. Thanks, Russ. You're welcome. And then uh, Michael Murray. That's yeah, you Mike. can find me on uh, all social medias as uh, Miter Mike's Woodshop. Miter Mike's Woodshop. And then Russ Meadows. Yep, you can find me uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and a little bit of YouTube on the Rust and Nails with a Z Woodshop. And then Shane and Shelly Cole. Hi everyone, Shelly Cole here with Know It Mom Knows, and we have a dog here too. So. <laughs> and I'm Shane with Shane's Hobby Shop. You find me on all your Instagram, YouTube, and all that, and go check out my YouTube channel. I got a 2,000 subscriber giveaway going on right now. Cool. And then Mr. Steve Good, how you doing, Steve? Hey, Russ. Thanks for having me tonight. You can find me at the Scroll Saw Workshop. 
just type in my name or scroll saw workshop in Google and you'll find me. Yep. All right. So we were with and uh, back over to Charlie uh, with Charlie about two or three weeks ago, about three weeks ago. And he did some a show that started in the veneering. And I was like, uh, he didn't have enough time to give us all a bunch of information. So I invited him back and we said that night that he needs to come back. So here he is. So Charlie, take it away. All right. Hey, thanks, Russ. And thanks so much for inviting me to be on your show. I, I'm honored and I really do appreciate it. And I'm happy to see you, the panel here and everybody and uh, everybody else out there live and watching this later on. Thank you so much. Um, uh, you can find me, well, I would like people to find me on my website, which is jackbench.com. I've got adjustable height workbench plans there. Uh, but otherwise, you see me I'm on Instagram quite a bit under Charlie Kosorek. And then on uh, YouTube, I have the Jack Bench business page. And I also have a Charlie Kosorek, which I'm actually more active on my personal uh, Facebook, Facebook, I'm sorry, Facebook page. And YouTube, of course, uh, YouTube channel, uh, Jack Bench uh, Woodworking. So that's where you can find me. And um, so I'll get right into it. I'm going to uh, flip the camera down, facing down onto my bench so you can see what I'm doing here. And I put my, I put some of my stickers on here because I've realized people don't know who you're talking to who's on the camera. But anyway, I'll switch the camera over now. Uh, da, da, let me see here. Get this set up a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it ought to work. There we go. Um, so what I've got here tonight, I've got this uh, mahogany veneer. This is uh, crotch mahogany, African mahogany, actually. Uh, this is gorgeous stuff. Uh, I've got this on um, uh, eBay, I think, quite some time ago. I've been just saving this forever. I've got quite a bit of it. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a panel uh, with this. And then I wanted to do a panel book uh, just a simple book match uh, of this veneer like this and then I wanted to put a border around it and I looked for some wood for some mahogany that was a similar color and a good match for the for that and I couldn't couldn't find any and so what I ended up doing is I found this koa that's actually a best a really good match for the mahogany so I'm going to do a border with the koa and then I've got some strips of dyed black veneer that I'm going to put in between there. And uh, if you're one of the fancy, get fancy, uh, the guy who taught me this is Tom Shrunk. He's just a freaking veneering genius. And he calls this, uh, this is a filete, which actually just means a little strip of wood in between two other strips of wood. <laughs> so... Uh, to get started with, what I want to do is I'm going to take this uh, mahogany and I'm going to uh, cut this and uh, joint the edge and uh, tape these two pieces together into this pattern, which I really like this pattern here. So I'll start out, and uh, this is pretty straightforward here. I'm not getting uh, not in too difficult. I have, uh, just to recap a little from last time, I take uh, a regular 48 inch aluminum uh, ruler and I cut it cut it so I got two pieces. I got this 16 inch piece and I put some PSA sandpaper on the back so it uh, stays put when I want to cut veneer. And then I just uh, take a utility knife and Light passes across here. All right, just to let you know, Al, I got people in the chat that I'm not the only one that thinks that looked like Batman signal. <laughs> Good. Yeah, Sterling Davis said it, and a couple others have said that. Uh, it looks like Sterling's the out there. How you doing, Sterling? Yeah, he's out there. Yeah, he says, I told him I love you, brother, and he told me I love you enough to get to heaven. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so then uh, a lot of times I'll take uh, this aluminum tubing here, 
with some more PSA sandpaper on it and then a spacer under it like this and then I'll rub this sandpaper across there just to get a nice smooth edge and you can feel it with your finger when it's doesn't take much so then once I make the first cut on the first piece you want to determine where to cut the next one so you overlay the two pieces together and you just look for uh, the perfect match you know you know it's not over here that doesn't match and this is you know happen to be very very close you find something there that looks good on that end then the other end I try to make that match and in this case I'm just gonna oops no, I moved it I hate it when that happens yeah me too but get everything aligned just ready and yeah Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll my straight edge on there, and I'll actually use the veneer itself as a, as a straight edge, and I just put this on to hold it in place. Where did I set my knife? Uh, question, what is the pad that you're using to cut on? Uh, this is a, a regular cutting mat, you know. Um, I think for fabric is typically what it's used for, fabric and other crafts. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought that looked like a fabric pad. Yeah, you can buy them in your fabric stores, or you can buy them at Hobby Lobby, and I, I think you can sell them at Walmart. Yeah, well, actually, that's where I got this one was at Walmart. Yep. They work very well. I'm lucky. I got this a while back. It's a cheaper one. They don't sell the cheap ones anymore, and all they sell is the self-healing ones, which are more expensive. All right. Just a shout-out out there to, uh, we have Katie Dotson, uh, Tom Spillane, uh, Natanic, Wood, Wood, Natanic River Woodcrafting with Chris Neelan. I just got to say Chris Neelan. Uh, my, uh, Michael Chipster, you're out there. Uh, Sterling Davis is out there. Uh, thank you all, all for watching. Oh, Steve French is out there. Hey, Steve. Nothing like being late. <laughs> <laughs> All Usually right. he comes on the last five minutes of the show. That's the reason I say that. <laughs> well, like, I, got, I got that one cut, and I'll do the same thing. Joint the edge with the sandpaper just to get a really nice, smooth edge on there. And that's pretty good. So I use blue masking tape for the for the initial assembly and then I use a regular paper veneer tape later on. But I'll line this up like that. And this masking tape has got a little bit of stretch in it. I mean, you guys know you can use this for clamping. Oh, yeah. I love but using a lot. You maybe see that stuff actually stretches a little bit, and so it gets a little bit of, actually pulls it in. And as a matter of fact, if you're not careful, you can pull it too tight, and it'll, it'll pull the, the stuff up like that. See if here. We've got Steve Carmichael's out there in the chat watching us, and Patrick Wood. Uh, Patrick wants to know from Patrick's workshop, uh, Charlie. When you receive your veneer, do you need to do anything to it to keep it nice and fresh? Yes, I do. Uh, if I have small pieces like this, I'll show you in just a second here what I do with it. I uh, I, I take some scraps of old wood. I had some old cabinet doors, and I, I, I two uh, pieces of scrap wood, and then I just take some 
screws and I just screw those wood together for a clamp to hold it. And I'll show you, I'm just gonna put a, run a piece of tape down the seam here. But I'll show you. I love it. Patrick Woodshop says, how do you sharpen your razor blades, Charlie? And <laughs> Javi goes with a razor blade sharpener. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I throw them away. <laughs> so you guys, now you can see. Oh, that looks awesome. You can see just, you know, wow, hold that. But it's, you know, perfect, perfect match all the way across there. But I'll put it back on the working side here. But then to answer your question, Patrick, it so happens I got some uh, walnut veneer that I've been saving for a while. Let me adjust the camera just to answer your question. So here, this is how I what I meant. So I got these this just these pieces of scrap. Well, I don't know what that is, particle board I had laying around. And um, I put my veneer in between there, and I just clamped the hell out of it with some screws. And uh, hope, hopefully, I'll keep it flat uh, to store it. And it. Now, do you do that for all your veneer? Well, no. Okay. Well, so what I was like, if you're if you, you uh, veneer comes in rolls a lot of times, so you get the veneer, yeah. in the roll, and then let's say you're going to use it, so. I need to break it out of the roll how long before I think I'm going to need to use it? You know, that's, that's a tougher because ideally you want to store it flat. You know, okay. if you leave it rolled up for a long time, it's going to have, it's going to take a set in that roll. Okay. Um, but on the other hand, you know, you, how much, you know, this stuff will come in a 12 foot roll. You know, what do you, you can't, I don't have plenty of place to put, lay out 12 feet of veneer flat and store it. Right. Um, but with the short pieces that I get, I'll do that with it. And I wanted to say too that um, it, it, it typically, you know, the more highly figured it is, the harder it is to keep it flat. You know, if you got nice straight grain stuff, it'll it'll stay flat easier usually. It depends on the type of wood, like this. Uh, oh, girl. This color that, that I'm using here. Coming up here. I, I, I ironed this. Come on up here. Okay. It was uh, it was all warped, and I ironed it, and I put some uh, softener on it, and I had it nice and flat, and I left it laying around, and then it uh, it warped again. So just a little while ago, I I ironed it over again to flatten it, uh, so it was nice and flat for uh, for making this panel. Cool. So anyway, so I'll get back to what I'm doing here. Yeah, go ahead. I just. No, no, that's good. I, I appreciate that. I'm glad you people throw out the questions. I like that. Um, I'll put the camera back. So, okay, so I got this, and I know I want to uh, do a, a border of, of this stuff. So I'll set this aside for a second. And with this koa, uh, you can see that the grain is running at an angle to the way the veneer is cut. And I don't want that. I want my uh, veneer, you know, to be cut about the, so the, at a, the same angle that the grain runs so that the border is running straight instead of running, you know, crooked around the panel. So I'll just take that approximate angle there. And and I'll just cut that right off. Okay. So now you can see that looks that looks a little better. I think it does anyway. So then I'll take uh, the other pieces, the matching pieces, and I'll try to get a match 
on these. You can see, I don't know if you can see on there. We can see. Yeah, you can see the grain pattern. So yep. I'll line that up so that those those stripes match there. And I'll do the best I can to try and line the whole thing up. I never figured in a million years it was, I'm not going to say complicated, but you went through this much for veneering. Like it, It's like, wow, I'm learning a lot. And this is really this is really pretty simple. You're right. It's simple to you, but well, no. I mean, as far as veneering goes, this is this is a simple, basic kind of stuff. Uh, some of these guys, oh, oh my gosh, you would not believe how involved some of this stuff gets. Jim Bashirs has showed up out there in the chat. How you doing, Jim? Hope you're feeling better. He fell this week and. Uh, Oh, no, I didn't know that. Jay fell and hit his ribs on the side of the deck. I don't think he broke any, but he... Glad to see you're out there, though, Jim. Yeah, yeah, I hope you're all right, Jim. You got me wanting to get some veneer now and steal some Mama's old I, quilting. I know, <laughs> I'm going to have to try this, I, I mean... Uh, Mama's got some quilting pattern, patterns. I bet if you matched them up... How that worked out, did I get that right? You come up with some interesting patterns. Oh, you sure can. Yeah, that's that's how I know what kind of board cutting board that is, Mama Quill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You recognize that. All right, and so there's two more if I can find them. There we go. So I'll do the same thing on these. Matter of fact, she wasn't too happy with me when I took one of her stole one of hers to cut some of my stuff off. I just backwards. That's I don't. Actually, Jim Bashir's just posted he did break some ribs. Oh, oh. oh, how did you do that? He slipped and uh on something and caught his ribs or you know, a side on the corner of the deck or the side of the deck. Oh man. Well, I've broken ribs before. Twice. Both times I was riding a bicycle when I did it. And I know how much that can hurt. Okay. Right. The last one. We have Mr. Dave Gatton has joined us out there in the chat. All right. Glad to have Dave and Steve Carmichael still out there. Steve Carmichael. So now, uh, I don't think we covered this. Do you actually sharpen your razor blades or just change them? No, I, these are just regular utility blades. I throw them out. Yeah. And I know I tried sharpening, and it really wasn't worth the trouble. They're so cheap. Exactly. You can buy a pack of 100 for like 10 bucks. So or less even. Yeah. yeah. So, no, they're, it's just not worth it. In fact, I know some of my friends uh, like to use a, a scalpel, medical scalpel, and they said that even with the scalpels, they're, they're so cheap on, on uh, Amazon that they don't even bother yeah. uh, trying to sharpen them. So I'll do the same thing with this. Now this, I got a terrible cut on that. 
you can see. I don't know if you can see that. No, but that's uh, pretty bad. In fact, that's bad enough. I think I'm going to do it over. I'm just going to trim a little off of there because that's not too good. Yeah, we had 64 watching. I sure hope I'd, I wish I could get 64 thumbs ups. Me too. Yeah, you're right, Sterling. Sterling said the hook Germany hook blades are awesome. I love the hook blades, and I have some of those too. But uh, they wouldn't work that great for what he's doing right now. But they do have. I have a. Uh, like three or four razor knives. Some of them set up with straight razors like Charlie's got, and then others with the hook blades for doing certain things. So those are awesome. Well, I've used a hook blade for doing, like, flooring. Yeah. I don't they know. Work for, they work for, like, if you want to tear up a rag. Yeah. You can, like, hook it in your vise and then grab and just start making strips with the hook blade rather than using scissors. They work great for that. This stuff is tearing up on me, so I'm gonna try using uh, I'm gonna try using my saw. Sometimes the saw works a little better. I normally just use a knife if I can get away with it. I don't know why. I guess I'm just used to using that more than a saw. Maybe I should use a saw more than I do. That's interesting. I never knew about you could use a little saw. That's pretty cool. It's a special veneering saw. Yep. That's... And uh, when you if you buy them, just you know, straight up, they're like any other thing. They're not sharp. But you can go to Joe Woodworker and he sells them. He sharpens them and sells them pre-sharpened. Yeah, that worked a lot better. Let's see how these other ones are. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That one's okay. All right, just the one I was having trouble with. So, I'll go ahead and clean these edges up a little bit. Like I said, you can feel along there, you know when you got it. It's pretty easy to tell if you, if you missed a spot. Yeah, Mom, if you were uh, trying to talk, uh, we couldn't hear you, so if you had a question. Nope. Your audio is not a... Any questions on the panel? Y'all guys are quiet tonight. You're all like me sitting there going like, Watching intentively. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wondering if Biscuit ate uh, Mom and Shane's mic. <laughs> they ate the mic cord? <laughs> I've seen it happen before. <laughs> yeah. Biscuit sabotaged them. Yeah. I've never done veneering before, so I'm just watching, taking it all in. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling the best fries myself. That here's one thing that I've never done, and it just it looks so yep. neat when it's done. Never done it either. Uh, uh, Shelly says, I was saying, I use a scalpel for marquetry I, that I do. So, Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I was saying. Friends of mine do that, too. They like to use that uh, scalpel for a lot of this kind of stuff. For the, Like you said, for the marquetry uh, or whatever else. Right. Tom Spillane still out there, Javi, Woodshop, Patrick, uh, Katie Dotson, Chris Spillane, uh, Jim Bashirs, Sterling Davis. Thank you guys for being out there. If you got any questions, I'm watching the chat. So, What crit do you use on your sandpaper? Uh, this is, I, I've got different, i got a 120 and a, uh, uh, I think a 180, and the 120 actually works a little better. The 180 is just too. 
takes too long to get anything done with it. But I use this PSA sandpaper for all kinds of different things. How are we doing for time? Oh, I better hustle it up. Yeah, we're about halfway through the show. All right. I'll get you there. No problem. And you know, another thing, too, to tell everybody out there, you know, if you watch this and you got a question, something, give me a call, or no, maybe not a call, but get a hold of me on, you know, give me an email or send me a message on Messenger or something, and I'll help you out. I don't, you know, I don't mind. Hear that, guys? So, not only for y'all out there in the chat, but uh, and here on the panel, but uh, if you're watching this recorded, which I have a lot of people watch it, um, that watch me from Germany, England, and that, oh. over the world, uh, that will watch it tomorrow sometime. So, if you have some questions on veneering, reach out to Charlie. I'll put absolutely. His, I'll put his information in the. Uh, notes underneath the video uh, so you'll be able to contact him he's on Facebook also right so okay so now we've got this piece here that I get my camera set up right again all right so we got the the two pieces that are book match that we want to use and then we got the stuff we're going to use for a border and I don't want too much. I, I only want maybe a, an inch or so of a border. And what you want to do when you're um, doing this border, there's, you know, there's a right and a left side on this. You know, this is, we'll call it the fat side and the skinny side here. Well, you want, when you're laying these pieces out, you want the fat sides together and the skinny sides together. And that way you'll get a better match at your miter. So you try to lay it out so the, the, the fat ends together. Then you got the, the skinny end together here. You come up here and you lay it out. Now it's hard to tell which one's which on this one. Can you sharpen your uh, veneer saw? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And I, I, you want to sharpen it. Okay. Uh, you really do want to. Uh, John Schaffner is out there. His computer broke, so he can't be with us on the panel. He's out there in the chat, and uh, he asked that question. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You can, and, and you should. So I like um, – flip this over again. We're talking about that bat. You know. Shane, Shane had a question. Uh, would you do a 45 cut or a butt joint? I would think a butt joint would be – Give you a raise up in your on uh, on what on, on the corners on the corners. Oh, these, this would be a forty-five. On the, I was on the, you tried on to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll do a forty-five. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Uh, he was asking about a butt joint. I would think that would be kind of problematic with veneer. It wouldn't be problematic. It's just well, the, the pattern match. wouldn't match. Yeah, yeah. I think it's you just. I think it just looked better. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess it would depend on the veneer. I mean, in this veneer, you have those two colors. A, a, a miter would match up better than a butt joint would. Exactly with the grain pattern he has right. and everything. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got I got mixed up with butt joint and and, and uh, lap joint. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to say butt. <laughs> <laughs> so he said butt. I was thinking lap joint. I don't know what I was. <laughs> so here's a. Uh, that's all right, Donald. Anybody that works at Lowe's can t always talks about butts. Here's a trick. You can see if you ever want some on, too. Just saying. <laughs> Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, so I want to cut this this stuff so, so they're all the same about an inch or so uh, in these strips. There's the camera there. So what I'm doing, I'm going to move this camera up wider so you can see. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this rule right down to the mat, like this. That's too close. Take that down like that. 
And then I'll find some kind of a spacer. This is so cool. Laying around, that's about what I want. I guess I should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't. Hang on a second. What I love about it, it's not only live, but uh, it's recorded so people can come back and watch it. All right, so here I'm just going to use this little scrap for a spacer. And then I'll take this other one. Is that going to work? Yes, it is. So I'm going to use that for a space. And I'll take this one down in front of it. Like that. I'll go on the other end. Same spacer. Take that down. Probably should have used the the big, the longer one for this part and the short one for the stop. But I think this will work. I hope I don't have to switch them. But anyway, so you do that. Now you just take from here, slide it underneath here. Well, now isn't that about as cool as crap? Yeah. And. I knew there was a method to your madness. You're learning I'm something. Saw yeah. This time. There. I've got a strip there that's hopefully even all the way. Push that other piece back out. And I just cut all four of them like that. That's cool. So simple, but yet so. Uh, yeah. Just, works. It works beautifully. It does. I'm looking here going like, wow, because when you were doing it, I'm going like, all right, where the heck is he going with this? But I kind of had the thought that you were going to do that. But. What's going on here? There, that's better. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. That one. Let me see. Did I get him straight? Y'all better be playing nicely out there in the chat. Yep, yep. <laughs> good. Looking good. I'm, I'm over here reading the chat, and I'm there. <laughs> Some guys having fun out there. They're having a blast, but well, that's what we want. Good thing yeah. it doesn't get saved, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're making some jokes about some things that went on this week, and I think it's <laughs> I think it's funny too myself. High school drama. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad we're adults? Yeah. Well, what was the thing that Patrick just put on there that I was gonna? I'm going to read this out loud because I just think this is hysterical. And and, and and I know dead, burn, good and well that Shelly's not going to get mad at this because she's going to laugh along. It's something about if a... Where is it at? If a tree falls in the woods. Yeah. If a man says something in the woods and a woman isn't there to hear it, is it still wrong? Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> exactly. All right, so now I got these four pieces all cut, and I'm done with this stuff. Let's pull that out of the way. Get that out of here. Sterling said he's offended, Russ. Oh, well. <laughs> so... Uh, in my haste here, I didn't keep track of which side was which, but this is fairly straight. I hope you got the idea earlier because I didn't exactly do it the way I planned. I, I, I lost track of what I, what the 
the fat side and the skinny side. But, so I come out here. So maybe it would have helped you had you marked the ends like with one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Exactly, so you, exactly. And that's what I should have done. And I normally probably would right. have. Well, I, I understand you're trying to, we're on a time constraint. So you're trying to move along, but I get what you're saying. It would have been better if you'd have marked them on the ends and then you would have known. Right. Oh, wait, I do have the sides that I sanded. I should mark that while I'm here. So this is, I'm going to put a little arrow to the good edge. That's sanded edge. Same thing here. We got Desert Bomb Woodworks out there. Uh, your Trash My Treasures is join us uh, uh, as a few. Uh, Desert Bomb Woodworking. Hi, you guys. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you out there very, very much. Okay. So here's another neat trick. And this, that last one was actually my own idea. But this is what I got from Tom Shrunk. The man, Mr. Veneer. The man, the myth, the legend. Oh, he's the guy, believe me. So you lay your piece of tape out like this. upside down on your mat. Your uh, your trash my treasure says thanks for doing this, Russ. Don't thank me, try thank Charlie. <laughs> okay, so I got these uh, like I said earlier, I got these strips of black dyed veneer. And what I'll do is I'll just put this. Yeah. This right on here. And then I'll take this black veneer. I'll just put it right on there. And that's how you tape that skinny stuff. That's cool. I like that. Oh, yeah. uh, Jeff Robinson wants to know if I tried the Pegasus blades yet. No, Jeff, I haven't, but they're on their way. I've ordered them. Okay. So that's one of these. And I'll just trim that off of there. Steve Good said they're okay, so I somewhat believe him every once in a while, sometimes, on the first Monday of the week, if there's no rain. All right. It's probably so your first mistake of the day. <laughs> right. I'll do that again. I, mean, I thought I'd get this done in an hour, but we're really well. Well, you have 15 minutes, so you're doing pretty doggone good. All right. Well, we'll I'll get you there. Huh? I'll get you close anyway. Yeah. Well, trust me, I've learned more than I ever knew about veneering because I didn't know nothing. But you were just like, when I watch this, I'm just in awe that um, it's kind of like anything else. I've been doing scroll sawing for so long, you can't tell me a whole lot about scroll sawing. Well, it's obvious you've been doing veneering for quite some time. Yeah, I've I done a bit of it. Yeah, it's fun. Of course, all it, of this stuff is fun, isn't it? It actually looks it. Yeah, it really is. Okay. Sean Rabino has joined us. Hey, oh, Sean. How about that? Yeah. Well, thank you. Nice to have you here. Wow. wow. Charlie, you're pulling in the big, the big guys. Pulling them in, hey, <laughs> rock and roll, man. Okay. I tell you what, one of my memorable moments, and this is going down as one of them too, is uh, when Sean uh, did the uh, 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 inlays with the Chinese flowers or whatever. Uh, it's been so long, I can't hardly remember. 
what they were called, but he did it on the show. And um, wow, I was in awe and watching that. That show actually went for two hours, I believe it was. I have to, I have to go back and watch that one because that might yeah. be something. Yeah, he gave you that thing in Atlanta too, didn't he? Yeah, he did the uh, Chinese flower. And he actually, the piece that he did that night, and I have, I don't have it right here at the moment, but I have it in my uh, office. Uh, the piece that he did that night, he mailed it to me, and I have it. With the uh, fl uh, flower blossom, Chinese flower blossom, or Japanese flower blossom, or whatever. Okay, That's three of them, one more, and we got it. That's right. Uh, Sean said, I handed it to you, Russ. That's right. He it wasn't this Atlanta woodworking show. It was the previous oh, Atlanta oh, woodworking show. That's that probably why I don't remember seeing Sean at the show when this year. Yeah, it was not this show. It was the previous year, or this show. But anyway. I told you so. Hey, I'm getting old. My mind is like. My wife told me the other night, you know, she said, what you used to do all night, it takes you all night to do anymore. And I said, yeah, you're right, sweetheart. Getting? Yeah, I know. I'm getting old. <laughs> I uh, have a friend of mine that uh, has cancer. He's a fellow firefighter. I met this man when I was 16 years old uh, and I was a junior firefighter. We've known each other for 42 years years wow. uh, and uh, he has cancer and is not doing very well I was just he got an award from the veteran he's a, a Air Force veteran he got an award today and I went out to his house uh, he only lives about 20 30 minutes from me and I went out to his house to see him receive the award um, he won't be with me much longer but it's been a long friendship 42 years A great inspirational man, let me tell you. He, uh, a very godly man, also. So, I want to do what I could have done this before too. I just need to move to... your camera back towards oh, you. It's... Oops, sorry about that. I got. That's all right. That's all right. Yep, like oh, that. Man. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So I want to. I need to figure out how big the panel itself can be. So. It'll be well, minus two times the width of this. Uh, Jeff Robinson wants to know, Charlie, do you have a video with the most common tools you would need for veneering? I do. I go to my YouTube channel. I got, I got uh, three or four different veneering videos. Uh, I got one on basic veneering that uh, people like that one. I'll go about two and a half less than what that is. Well, about 12 inches then. So, I'll figure out how big this uh, this is going to be. So, we'll get about there and there. And square. So, this would be not this way. Here we go. Okay. 
this work. Okay. Same thing on this end. There's my mark. Uh, I got myself cutting left, cutting on the wrong side of this deal, but I'm going to keep it moving. <laughs> That's what happened my, when I tried to try to cut some some thin stuff with uh, the knife I won from Russ. Yeah, <laughs> I never will forget that. That's how you cut yourself, huh? Okay. All right. So I will take. Uh, I'll joint these edges as quick as I can. You're messing up. People are saying you're messing up, Batman. <laughs> well, yeah, just working with what I got here. Okay. Sterling Davis wants to know where your cutting glove is. My glove. That's right next to my of glove, Sterling. <laughs> Yeah, it's right next to the oops. Yeah. Yeah, I was making people nervous because I wasn't wearing gloves when I did that whittling video. <laughs> You know what? I'm just going to skip that. I'm just going to real quick show you guys because we're running out of time. So what we'll do is we'll take we'll just now I would normally take a little a lot more care in trying to place exactly where the cuts are and where the joints are made. But since we're running out of time, I'm just going to make it happen. Do where did I go? What am I doing here? I want to go 45 right there. That's not it. You guys are laughing at me now. See, this is the thing with live. We're live, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Flip it around. There you go. All right. There we go. All right. I agree. Live is the worst of the worst. If it can happen, it will happen, and it will be bad on live. All right. So I'll go like cut that with that 45. Right there. Like that. Then we'll take another one and which side did I join? I think this side. Get that extra tape out of the way. And we'll just pretend like we did a nice job of matching the green up here. Hold that right up there. Now that is just about as slick as I've ever seen. I like it. Now, now like Charlie. That. Charlie, normally would you have cut that 45 prior or are you going to just... No. No? All right. No, I don't want to cut it ahead of time. I got to move. Because it. what he's doing, he's cutting the first 45, and let's say that he's off on the first 45 just a little bit. By putting the other piece underneath it and following the first 45, they'll cut them together and they'll fit perfectly. Yes, sir. Right. That, that is, is the plan, Stan. Yeah, that is like, that is smart. Well, I'll tell you what, that rush sure is smart. Yeah, that is like so cool. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amazing. 
if I could only do my picture frames that way. I know, isn't it the truth? Yeah. Oh, I, I They're a little trickier, picture. aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 45 miters on a picture frame are about the hardest dang thing I've ever done in my life to make them fit. It is for me, by God. <laughs> yeah, to make them fit good. I mean, they they're, can be a pain. That is like just so oh, that's awesome. awesome. That's how you do it. And Charlie, then, that, I mean, you haven't even finished it, and that looks just like so cool. So that's uh, that's the deal. So when we're done, uh, I do it more carefully and all that. But I think you're getting the idea. Now, the, what you would do is just take that and then turn around and glue it to a piece of uh, wood. Uh, substrate. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like so, if you were going to make a box, for instance, you would have the substrate cut out and then glue that right to the top of the box. That could be the, uh, what am I doing here? Here we go, I'll get back in the picture. So yeah, so this could be, uh, you know, the top of a box, it could be a tabletop, it could be, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you're making. Uh, it could just be a decorative panel you're making, something... I don't know, but uh, so yeah, you could actually have a piece of a, a headboard and have it uh, uh, put that into the headboard, have like like an inlay that into a headboard. Right, yeah. right, so yeah. Whatever it is you're making, whatever furniture or decorative thing you're making, which way do you guys like it better? Like that? I think it's like that. Yeah, I like it like that. Yeah. So, so that's that's my story, guys. That is like oh, man, awesome, Russ, awesome. one hour. <laughs> that is like awesome. <laughs> Guys, unmute yourself. That was awesome, Charlie. That was awesome. That awesome. was right. great, man. Well, yeah, that's thanks, great to have me on here, Russ. Fantastic. I, Loved it. I Good. tell you what, what we're going to plan this if you do not mind. Let's yeah. give it another two or three weeks. And what I would like for you to do, if it's not asking too much, yeah, go ahead and finish that piece. And then uh -huh. come back and show us attaching it to the substrate. Oh, sure. That's easy. Now, the yeah. thing I'll, I'll tell you, though, you know, that can't be, that's not going to be your whole hour because what will happen is I'll put it in a veneer bag, in the vacuum bag, and I'll turn the pump on, and that pump is so noisy that that's, you're not going to want to sit there and watch the pump right. thing flat. You know what right. I mean? Right. But I'll show you how to do that. No sweat. But you yeah. might want to have something else planned for the rest of that uh, show. <laughs> that no, I understand what you're saying because you put it in the vacuum pump, and once you bring it down, you let it sit there and right. for a while so that it adheres the substrate and the veneer together. Exactly. So how long does it usually sit? Uh, depends on the type of glue you're using. Uh, I usually just use, uh, you know, Type Bond uh, 1 or Type Bond 3. And, uh, An hour? hour. Yeah. Power. Yeah, okay. Good, but if well, you're then, using some of the, the the fancier glues, you know, you might have to let it sit overnight. Using like right. a urea glue or something. Let's do that. Let's plan on three or four weeks from now. Okay. Uh, coming back and uh, I tell you what, one would do this then if it's not too much to ask yeah. is uh, finish the project and then glue it to the substrate and then put it in the bag. Oh, just to show. Well, no, I want to show you guys how to. How to put it in the bag, though? There's, you know, okay. There's, okay. there's stuff to that too. Okay. Well, so, then that's uh, what the next one. You decide what you want to do, and give us like I'll give you two or three weeks, and we'll come yeah. back and rejoin this. But you will be the first, the <laughs> very first three time <laughs> on the show. But I tell you what, I have learned so much, and I want to tell you, Charlie, thank you very. Well, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you liked it. You know what else? You know what I could do. I got a couple of tricks on how to repair veneer. You get veneer and it's cracked or it's got holes in it. How about I? How about if I? I'll put it in the bag, and I'll pull that bag, and I'll somehow I'll drag that machine, hopefully, so it don't make too much noise. Mm. And uh, then I, I, I can finish the I can finish the rest of the hour uh, trying to show you how to do the repairs. That's that sounds good. Yeah, because I, I got a couple of really good tricks on how to do repairs. Because you have just uh, just gave me enough to make me like, wow, I've got to try this. So I mean, like, really. So, and I know that everybody else that's been out there is the same way. So, um, well, I know. hope I hope you guys do because this really, this you know, 
it opens up a whole lot of doors for you if you start trying to add veneer into your projects. It does. It does. Yeah. It so just I, opens I, up I, doors. I got questions about what if you don't have a vacuum line? Can well, you I'll tell you what. On, on a small piece like this, you could use a clamps. You could use a, a couple of calls and a clamp, and you could get away with it. But if you get anything too much bigger than this, I don't know how you do it without a either a real big elaborate veneer press or a vacuum bag. Right. Well, same with me. I wouldn't do anything any bigger than that. Yeah. All right, guys. I, 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 I'm really serious. I don't want to get out of here because I want to stay on and on and on and let you finish that. But uh, uh, my friend over there, Dave Gatton, is doing his show, and I want to go over there and join him. And um, I thank you, Charlie, again. Hey. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure. No, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really appreciate what you've done for us tonight. Uh, we've had everybody in the panel. Uh, Patrick's Woodshop still out there. TJ's. Uh, Desert Bomb Woodworks, Katie Dotson, Sterling Davis, Jim Bashirs, all y'all guys have been out there. Uh, Steve Carmichael, thank you, Sean Rubino, for being um, out there. Hey, uh, thanks for me. I'm really, I, I'm honored to have you guys. And I look up to a lot of you guys, and you're watching me. Uh, how about that? So about cool. That? Well, yeah, I want to tell you, you're up there in the. That I have a top ten list, and you moved up into the top ten list, and I don't want to disappoint yeah, anybody baby. else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, just absolutely fantastic, though. I really one of my favorite, uh, and Sean Rubino on his is uh, another one of my favorite uh, uh, when he did that inlay work. But uh, yeah, let's hey, uh, let's call it. What'd you say, Steve? Make sure everybody goes out and checks. Uh, check out Charlie's Jack Bench uh, workbench. It's amazing. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Take a look at that. Yeah, yeah, he's got a lot of awesome, awesome. And I went and looked at a few of them uh, uh, videos on Jack. It's Jack Bench uh, on uh, Jack tell us Bench woodworking on, on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got I got quite a few videos, and hopefully some of them are good. <laughs> <laughs> you did not too long ago did a tour and met a lot of the woodworkers. Didn't you? I did. Well, I was down in Atlanta. You know, I met a whole lot of these guys. You know, I know I met both the Russes there and Steve and uh, yeah, Always see himself. <laughs> I'll uh, put I'll put his information to uh, YouTube and all that stuff in the info underneath the video down there. So if anybody y'all want to go over there, and I would highly recommend you go watch his videos. Uh, until that time, we're going to call it a night. Thank you once again for all you guys being out there in the chat. I appreciate you so much. Uh, Jim Veneers, Jeff Robinson, TJ's Woodworking Hobby, Sterling Davis, uh, all y'all for being out there. You make it all worthwhile by being out there, and your questions are great. Uh, thank you to Al Forte, uh, Donald, Donna, Russ, Shane and Shelley and Steve Good, my good friend, thank you for being here. And a big shout out to Charlie again. Thank you very much for what you've done. My pleasure, Russ. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And we only got one thing left to do before we close it out. And that is just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. <laughs> God bless. Enjoyed you being here. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. There you go, buddy. All right. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>